the final girls. Uh, I'm gonna try and make this uh, short because there's only one thing I can say about this movie. I just watched it, and there's only one important thing that I can say about this movie, and it's that it's fucking awesome. Everybody should watch this movie. I I went in expecting, honestly, not to like it that much, because um, I didn't remember the trailer really well, and it didn't seem like it was gonna be that great. But holy shit, it was so much fun. It's only like 88 minutes, I think. Great characters, great story, great plot, great music. The music sounded like a mix between It Follows and Hotline Miami. 80s, absolutely great. Um, cinematography, it was so colorful and fun to watch. And uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically Max. Her mom was, oh, Max is played by Tisa Formiga, who I love, and her mom was an actress, and she starred in, like, the slasher horror film in the 80s, and she goes to this uh, screening of the movie three years after her mom dies in a car crash, and uh, it's sort of like to commemorate, you know, the anniversary of her death, and all these people come in there, like, super fans of the movie and it's like a whole cult following and everything and uh the theater uh there's a fire so her and her friend tries to like cut through the the screen and escape through an exit behind it but they end up in the movie they cut the screen and they end up in the movie and it's so great like she meets her mom in the movie she meets all the characters and the location and it's so fun they managed to make like they managed to make a simple location really fun because it's basically a camp where there's like two buildings and a little bit of like wood area around but they make it so fun to be it's sort of like how cooties made like one kindergarten uh not like a preschool really fun this movie did the same thing and all the characters are so funny and you have the typical characters from the 80s mixed with uh people from now, from modern times, and uh, it's so great to see everybody's uh, interactions and relationships, and this movie does a really good job at um, establishing everybody's um, relationships, because when they go into the movie, it could be a bit confusing. There's there's only like four or five people, but um, it they did a good job at letting you know this girl likes this guy, this guy should leave this girl, this girl and this girl are friends, blah blah blah. They managed to do it in like 5 minutes and it didn't feel um, too much, it didn't feel awkward, it was totally natural. So you go in knowing who these characters are. Because once they go into the movie, you're introduced to the characters from the actual slasher horror movie as well. So it could be a bit overwhelming having all these people moving in and out, but they make, uh, they make sure that you clearly differentiate between them and you're not confused on any type of relationship or anything because all the characters are so different and um they they did a great job with that and they also did a great job at making this movie not the most predictable thing ever there were a few plot points that would it was clear where they were going but mostly you didn't know who was gonna die and who was gonna live and it reminded me a lot of until dawn because until dawn is a video game now where you make decisions and it's basically a group of kids at a cabin and there's something chasing them and killing them off and you make the decisions on who gets to live and die and you can have everybody live or everybody die and any different combination of everything. So it reminded me of that but that was like a serious video game where you, like your decisions mattered. This was a fun situation where all these kids were thrown into this movie and it was just like well, we gotta get out of here, and um, the reason why it's called the Final Girls is because um, there was one final girl that kills um, the serial killer at the end, and that's where the credits roll. So they are trying to get um, to the end of the movie so they can escape. Their plans don't work out always, actually, ever, almost. So there's twists and turns, like this, this person dies, and this person dies, and things that they didn't expect and count on, and um, it was so much fun. It went by so quickly for me, and I, I just finished watching it, and I wanted to review it, and uh, 
so good. I, I didn't, the music as well, and I didn't expect to like it this much, but I did. And there was even some emotional things in it, you know, uh, Max finds her mom and she misses her so much. She's been gone for three years and they were so close. She never knew her dad, so she was best friends with her mom. Her mom dies and now she's in this movie where her mom is her age and they can hang out and it's so great. And all the characters are more than you expect them to be, I guess. Um, you have the guy that she likes and you think, oh, he's just gonna be like a throwaway guy, but he was actually really nice, and he was trying to do something good, and there was like the bitchy girl that you think, oh, you're gonna fucking hate her all the time, but she actually has redeeming qualities, and she is not actually a bitch. And uh, that girl, I always forget her name, but she was in Arrested Development, and then she was in the Oranges and like a bunch of other movies. I never liked this girl. She was also in uh, Whip It, and I never liked that girl. Um, she always plays the same characters to me. She basically played the same character here, which was fine because it sort of fit and because there are so many characters. Well, not so many, but yeah, there's more characters than usual. Um, her screen time was a bit limited, so she didn't get on my, on my nerves, but I usually don't like that girl, and I still don't like that girl. I have like, I guess I just have like a personal issue with her. I, I have no idea. I don't know if it's her style of acting or if it's the characters that she plays. To me, she always plays the same exact character and I'm not a fan. So, yeah. And then you have like the slutty girl that has sex with everybody and then you have like the dumb dog that only thinks about sex also and then you have Max's mom who's a virgin in the movie and um, she she dies in the original movie because she loses her virginity. So Max is like trying to get her mom to like not have sex it's really funny actually and um you just want to know if they're gonna make it if who's gonna live who's gonna die do they get to escape this movie if someone dies in the movie do they stay dead in real life you know what what happened with the theater that burned down all those questions you have throughout the movie but it's not they're not constantly in your head like what's gonna happen once, you're just enjoying it and you're just watching it and they're enjoying it so much fun and uh the cinematography like there's these crazy like uh switches between like super colorful and black and white and they're like why are we colorblind and it's like oh we're in a flashback and it's so fun and um uh, all these great camera angles and things like that and it's like typical 80s mu music while the girls like strip and and have fun it's really really great and um it reminded me of like Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods was a great example of taking a genre that's so predictable and so overdone, I guess. But it can still be fun. It can still be really, really fun. And Cabin in the Woods did that really well. And I feel like this movie did it really well. Final Girls. Really fun. And I really like that the uh, serial killer had like the most predictable, boring backstory ever. And he was just a faceless serial killer with a mask, just like any other with a machete, and uh, he was like the typical villain, and it worked so well, because you don't need anything else in this movie. The characters make it enjoyable by themselves, so... <sighs> I feel like I talked a lot, I, I didn't say anything important, just watch it. Um, super fun movie, super quick, watch it with friends, watch it by yourself, you're gonna have a good time either way. So, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna look for the score of this movie because I kept, I kept saying soundtrack, but I guess it's a score. It sounded a lot like Hotline Miami, and I'm wondering if maybe the same people did it. And it also sounded a lot like It Follows, like it had the same instrumental uh, at times. Um, that keyboard, uh, I, I, I actually don't know if it's a keyboard, but I guess it is, and I'm gonna look it up and see if it's the same people that did It Follows, because I really like the main theme from that. So, yeah, The Final Girls, awesome, awesome movie, awesome time, one of the funnest movies I've seen so far. This one and Goodies, together, like, double feature, best night ever, so, yeah. Bye. Bloodbath is the
granddaddy of all campsite slasher films. Max's mom plays Nancy, this shy girl next door. Nice legs, what time they open. It's cool you get to remember your mom this way. At least I get to see her on the anniversary of her death, even if she is being chased by a psycho. Somebody's coming. Hey, do you guys know the way to Camp Bluefinch? Tina. So we're in the movie. Hey. Oh, hi. What's your name? Max. Best summer ever! Anyone want to help me pick some strawberries? Nope, but I'll give you a hand with those melons. Talking about her boobs. Oh, the writing is so bad. What is that noise? It's Billy. He's coming. Everyone who has sex in this movie dies. It's awesome. No sex. Run! Wait, wait, wait. Selfie time. Okay. Two. How do we get out of here? Movies like this end when the final girl kills the bad guy and the credits roll. That's Paula. That's the final girl. We just have to stay with her till the end of the movie. Oops. I don't know where they keep the hardware. I want chainsaws and big ass knives, and I want them now. Um, guys, what's happening? Why am I colorblind? Am I having a stroke? Or a flashback? I wonder if all this blood is just corn syrup, you know? Like these characters are walking around with just corn syrup in their veins. Oh, no. Oh, God, that's blood. I know in the movie you're supposed to die, but that doesn't mean you have to, right? What do we do now? We fight. <laughs> 